I'm going to talk about reducing the Australian wool growing industry's risk with China. Um, for the last two decades, China has been a great customer of ours, fantastic customer. And today, as Caroline mentioned, China takes about 80% of our wool, and if I'm correct, it's worth about 2 billion Australian dollars. However, having one big customer in any business is a big risk. And having someone like China who can change the laws or the rules during the night, perhaps even bigger. The risk is now becoming more acute over recent years, and I want to explain why and what we're going to do about it, or try to do. Recent changes in China, yeah, are causing some headwinds, yeah. Wage inflation, we get various figures, but reports of around 18% year on year for the past three years. The average wage today for a semi-skilled worker in China, and I get this information direct from the factories I work with, yeah, is around 800 US dollars per month. For example, this compares today with Vietnam, and I get, once again, this information direct from the manufacturers, 180 to 200 US dollars. You can see <coughs> new environmental laws has also added to the cost. Last year, um, I think in March, the... Um, the new environmental laws were announced for the textile industry and the Chinese Environmental Protection Agency the day after really went into action. So what that means is to meet the new regulations, the wool manufacturing or wool processing industry in China got to invest a lot in new effluent treatment equipment. So overall result, China is no longer the cheap manufacturing place it was, once was, even three or four years ago. And I'd just like to mention some recent information in that I, I study the price of yarn. Yarn is the building block for wool knitwear. And I've noticed that the compared, comparing Chinese made yarn, wool yarns, the most commonly used type of yarn into a wool sweater, with Italian yarns, the Chinese have been accelerating the prices and catching up with the Chinese suppliers. The last few months, it's actually turned the table, and that's because the Chinese trade in US dollars and the Europeans, Italians in euros. So, right, if you want to order some yarn today from the best suppliers in China, it's actually more expensive than Italian yarns. Okay, other factors which are impacting, other headwinds. Labour shortage. When I mention there's a labour shortage in China, people think I'm crazy. Yeah? Why is there labour shortage? Well, all the textile manufacturing centres are in the area which I call Greater Shanghai, on the eastern seaboard. And most of the semi-skilled workers live in the Chinese bush. So over the years, they've had to travel from home and live in a porter cabin, work in the factories and send money back to the families 2,000 or 3,000 kilometres away. But they're not returning to work now, because as China develops the interior, a semi-skilled worker can get a nice job in a local four-star hotel, nice uniform and nice food, but more importantly, live with his family. Also, there's a shortage of skilled workers. Skilled workers, yeah, most of the skilled workers who were trained up in the 80s are reaching retirement age, or they've got promoted become CEOs, so out of the production. So there's a big shortage of skilled workers in departmental sections, in the combing sections, spinning sections. Yeah. Chinese government policies. You know, China is trying to move their economy away from solely on manufacturing to consumption. That's going to have an impact. Also, there's a move away from low-tech and unfortunately, textile manufacturing is seen as low-tech to high-tech. China won't make, want to make cars, which they're already doing, want to make trains, what they're already doing. They want to overtake Apple when it comes to iPhones. <coughs> unfortunately, textile manufacturing always moves to the cheap labor-cost countries. Yeah? We've seen it all before, and I've seen it all before. I actually started work for the Australian wool growers in 1970. And I spent, in the manufacturing sector, my life, business life, in five countries. UK, where I'm from, 
When I first joined, UK traded 50% of the world's wool in Bradford. No longer. Italy, France, Germany, and Japan. With the exception of Italy, just about everything's disappeared. Italy is just a fraction of it once was. I think 15 years ago, it took 20-odd percent of our wool today, about four. Yeah? Then where did we move to working? Where was the sent off? In the 1980s, South Korea and Taiwan. You remember the days when, perhaps none of you are old enough, but when everything was made in Taiwan. That became too expensive, so the exodus to China, including Taiwanese and Korean companies. Yeah? Now the same appears to be happening with China. Okay? Our response. Since I've been in Australia, the wool growers have always been worried. Every AGM raised the question to me, and I've been here 10 years, too many eggs in one basket, China. Okay? A few years ago, we started to look. Yeah? We didn't just rush off somewhere. We did a lot of studies. Yeah? Study we, countries we studied, places like Cambodia, Indonesia, Bangladesh, Myanmar, Vietnam. Following the evaluation, we found that Vietnam ticked most of the boxes. Yeah? We set the criteria first. We always set criteria. First of all, you might not agree with their political system, but perhaps unlike Australia today, it's politically stable. Low labor costs. It's about 25% of that of China I've already mentioned. Yeah? Yeah? Another key thing, it's absolutely, absolutely got a lot of textile factories. Yeah? Many, many textile factories. The problem is, when we approached them three or four years ago, not one was using wool. Not one had seen wool. When we started talking, it could have been my Yorkshire accent, but the thought was talking about acrylic to start with. So we started to explain about the Australian wool industry, show them our fibres, show them products made from it. Yeah? So with these large number of factories, already got a large number of textile workers. Yeah? They know how to operate machines. Also in Vietnam, to support the industry, there's a lot of textile institutions like Hanoi Textile University, Textile Research Institute of Hanoi and Ho Chi Minh, and VITAS, the Vietnam Textile Association. Get strong support from the, both the central and regional government because it's very important to the Vietnam's economy is textile uh, production. They've got good access to a large emerging consumer base, even better access to us, of Poland, Czech and the Baltics, because a lot of the owners of the companies was actually educated in them countries when after the, what the Vietnam called the American War, in the 80s, the Soviet bloc took over and helped them. So a lot of them went to universities, etc. in these countries. Um, so as a part of our strategic plan, Edouard Strategic Plan 2013-16, we introduced a new program called Supply Chain Diversification. Yeah? That means setting up new supply chains, Re reducing our reliance primarily on China, yeah? and getting eventually more people in the auction room you know, to, 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 to um, bid for our wool, other than Chinese. Yeah? The, so we came up with the out of Vietnam project, I'd just like to give all my projects names rather than a sort of a number what looks like a tax file number, I feel it's more interesting. So the, we explained to the Vietnamese partners or potential partners what we wanted to do, reduce our risk on China. Our value proposition to them was, we will teach you how to make good premium products out of the best wool fiber in the world. We'll send our technicians, etc., teach you how to dye, spin, knit, whatever. Yeah, and once you're up to speed, once you're up to speed, then we'll introduce you to potential new customers. We said we can't guarantee uh, new customers because we're not commercial. We don't get involved in the, the uh, commercial discussions, but we match make. Yeah. So essentially, they was making cheap cotton T-shirts, cheap polyester products, and their customers if you like, was the equivalent of the Walmart or the Kmart or the big W. So says, you make good products out of wool, we'll introduce you to the country roads as sports crafts, for example. Yeah. So at the start of the project, our target, and we started the project nearly three years ago in July, we had a target of 12 manufacturers. Today we've got 53. Yeah. 
and about 20 of these are up to speed, can produce good quality, not the latest, you know, Gucci design, but good quality knitwear from our wool, knitwear and wovens, and we introduce them already to retailers in Japan, Korea, and Australia. We organize trips to them countries. We didn't fund it at their own expense to show the commitment. Yeah? So we introduce them, if you like, to the Japanese versions of David Jones or Country Road and same in Korea, etc. Yeah? Going forward, we want to expand the wool manufacturing capacity in Vietnam. We already formed a marriage with two Japanese companies who are investing in new, one is investing in new wool uh, spinning plant there, and the other one in a new weaving plant for men's suitings. Yeah? Now, I don't want to scare monger, but um, because of the sheer size, yeah, it's not going to happen overnight. I'm not going to see China suddenly disappear. It so dominates uh, the manufacturing sector for our wool. But my message is, we have to be prepared. As I say, on the previous slide, I told you we've seen it all before. The only problem is, we need about five or ten Vietnams. China's so big. Yeah, yeah. But just uh, on a good note, relating to China, the government's new policy to move China away from uh, a manufacturing economy to a consuming one, plus, as you know, if you visit Sydney or Melbourne, who are the main buyers of luxury products, and we include merino wool products, is the Chinese, yeah? So, we have great opportunities in the consumption side, yeah? And that's where Edouard, for the next few years, is going to focus a lot of its marketing efforts. But at the end of the day, somebody has to make the product. Thank you.